Okay, first task is to take the mill scale off this piece of steel. This is 40 by 5 millimetres. Alright, put your fingers in your ears, let's go. Right, that's a bit warm. Let's get it in here. I've scribed a line across at this point. I'll put the cutting disc on and we'll cut that thing right half in two. Good as gold, I'll just uh, buff over those sharp edges and we can move on to doing the next job. Now I've got two pieces roughly 100 millimeters uh, in length that'll give me two tools on each piece. So that should work out well. And the next trick is to get the uh, steel into the mill, my mill drill, and machine the first one. The little step that we want on them to engage the uh, retaining rings on one of these, the step will need to be 1.5 millimeters. On the other, it'll need to be two. Hence, the need to uh, do this in two stages. Okay, let's open up this. that a bit of a wipe, get rid of that uh, rubbish that's on there, make sure those jaws are reasonably tidy to start with. Where's a brush? I'll brush that out. It'd be nice if I had compressed air out here but I don't. Just want to make sure those surfaces are clear for the parallels to sit on. And we'll start with piece number one, which we'll call this one piece number one. Right, I'll just bring this to the centre. Or thereabouts. Well done that wrong. Let's go back, back where I was. Well we've got 40 millimeters across here. The rear edge of that cutter is right up on the edge of the plate. It's a 12 mil cutter. So if I bring that in eight millimeters it'll come right up to the center line. Of course we want one and a half millimeters space there so I really want to bring that up uh, Let's say six millimeters. 
we'll do that. We'll set this to zero. It's five. That's six millimeters. Let's see where we are. That looks pretty good to me. Okay. Well, I will check that and see what we've got. That should be good. Let's just wind down until we touch off. The cutting fluid. roughly half a millimetre. Take a cut. That looks pretty good. Come down another half a millimetre. This should be our final cut. And then I will move the table in forward, leaving a 1.5 millimetre strip down the middle, and then mill off the front piece. All right. I don't think you need 
to watch the rest of this, so I'll bring you back when I'm moving things. Right, well that's uh, all machined out. I'm just going to make mark this for parting it up. I'm going to want to take two tools off this piece of steel. I'm just checking my length. So my centre's about here. That's my cut line will be. And the centre of each tool, if you like, is going to be here. And here. So I'm going to mill out the centre here in both cases so that I've got a nice flat surface to put a drill bit through because I'll use a hole saw to uh, cut my discs. So that'll do close, that's close enough for my purposes. So I'll just fire this up and mill those pieces out. So we're going to have a centre here and a centre here and I want to centre pop those for drilling. Let's make my centre here and here. the handle. This is our centre for the handle I'm putting in now. And I'll do this in a couple of stages. I'll drill the hole first and I'll use the hole that I've drilled to act as the pilot hole for the uh, 
hole saw that I'm going to use to cut those into discs. And the reason I do it that way, of course, is because it's handy. I uh, don't have a big powerful lathe, I can't uh, spin those down, mount them on an arbor and spin them in the lathe and take large amounts of metal away. I just don't have the facility to do that. So we'll be doing it this way instead and I'm just looking around now for a hammer and I have multiple hammers and they should be in this little tiny room but they're very good at hiding. should do nicely let's give it some a proper thump now that I've got a location there you are I hardly need to drill a hole now just about punch one right through okay so there's my piece of steel we started off five mils thick we've milled a millimeter and a half off that so we're down to about three and a half millimeters thick or so here and that was going to be more than adequate. That's more than an eighth of an inch. It's plenty of steel. So now I need to set up a drill chuck in my mill drill and drill a hole through here and a quarter inch hole is what I'm going to use need there for my drill. Um, so that's what I have to find and do. Right, this little drill press will do the job for us. Running a pilot hole through there. Slightly undersized. Let's put the quarter inch drill bit in here, 6.35 millimeters, which is the size of the pilot my hole saw get this drill through here this is a probably set a little bit fast for doing quarter but we got through that okay nice clean cuts that'll do nicely right so hole saw next I don't know whether I can use that little drill press or not. I suppose it might if I change the speeds. Well, as you can see, here's my arbor for a hole saw, and I've taken the drill bit center out of it. I put a plain, plain rod in there. That act as the pilot, and uh, I've got a couple of whole different size hole saws I'll use. This one here which is, what's it say it is, 32 millimeters, inch and a quarter. That one I'll use to do one tool, and that will be one that will be suitable for a retinette. Uh, we'll be looking for an outside diameter of roughly 27 millimeters. And we want a larger one to do the other tool. So I've got to figure out which tool I need for that. This retaining ring here for the AGFA. We're looking for a tool to about 29 millimeters in diameter. This one, the disc we're likely to get out of that is somewhat smaller than that, not by much, but by enough, probably 27 millimeters. That's no good. We'd need the next size hole saw up from that, which would be 32. We're looking for a 35, I think. I'll see if I've got one. So this is the one we want. That'll probably, it's going to cut us a bigger diameter than we really need, but um, better too big than too small. We can always make it a bit smaller. 
Okay, so there's that hole saw mounted on the arbor. Now, the way this is mounted, the larger diameter hole saws use these pins to locate and lock against the tool. Now, if you just drive it all the way down instead, hard against the arbor, it'll be harder to get off the arbor because it'll lock on very strong. But it means that it's much more rigid. So I'm not going to engage these pins. I'm just going to put it on the arbor like that. I'll fight with that with some multi-grips after the event. So let's see if we can drill a hole with this. What I've got here, as you can see, is I have the hole saw set up. I've got a piece of wood under there with a hole through the middle of it that the spindle can go all the way through so that when we cut through with the hole saw I'm not digging holes into my drill press table. So I'll just put a little drop of oil on there. Let's see how we get on this hole saw. buried in it. So I'll try again. So it's not a powerful machine. Belt slipper. Oh no, the motor's falling out. I think that cutter might be very blunt, very old, I've had it for many years, been abused, all manner of parts, including drilling holes through stainless steel. Breaking through, that's it. I'll unpack this and we'll see what we've got. Where's my disc? Oh, it's still up in the tool. Okay, so we've got to get it out of there. I think I'll just about poke that free if I use Use this uh, scribe. Oh, it's stinking hot. That tool must be good and blunt. Right. So see what we've got here. If I find some pliers, I don't burn my pinkies. So there's our tool. We've got our and tool, not the tangs here for engaging the retaining ring. And when I'm now going to mill off this piece and this piece to leave this narrower. We don't need it full width and it allows me to use it in a 35mm camera to easily get it through the film gate if this is narrowed down. We're only interested in the full length from here to here. And I'll better measure that and see what we've actually got. As you can see we've got about 30.8 there, certainly more than 30 millimeters, and that's more than we need so that's a good result. It's nice and neat. 
looks tidy it's still hot and burns my fingers but um, so far so good I think at this stage I'll put that to one side return to the mill with this and take those two sides down it's, uh, it's all looking good but I will go through the same procedure with the other half of this except I'll use the smaller size and I'll be able to make a tool that does the retinettes or the retina 1B very nicely not that I need two of them but um, it'll be there for swaps so here's what we've been left with we've got our two discs different diameters of course one we need larger than the other so next thing I want to do is mill off this edge and, and this edge in both cases to get the width down about 22 millimeters would be fine so what I'll do is first I will use my grinder and just knock off one of these pieces here on e in each case so that I can drop that down in the vise on the mill and then when I make my pass it will be parallel to the centre line here and all I can do is lock that off take it out of the vise drop the other side in and do the same so I can mill that down in both cases and I just want to get that narrowed down this one here I think we'll make that exactly the same width 22 millimeters I don't think there's any need to have that keep that diameter across here right so I'll just grind those two pieces off there off camera so you don't have to watch it and we'll move on to the machining after that so here we are I've got the offending edges taken off with the grinder now I can set these up in the mill drill and clean up this face here and here and flip it do exactly the same on the other side it'll look nice and neat you'll never know I did it okay with my height set to give me roughly 10 millimeters above the uh, edge of the tank we'll just run a few passes across here I think particularly well trammed in do you doesn't matter we'll get there in the end it's a problem with a uh, circular column things never quite where you expect them to be
bring you back once this side's done. Now you can see there that is lifted up out of the vise. I really didn't want that to happen. That's a shame. Well, I'll have to clean it up. That would have been a product of me having one here and one here and the vise not grabbing them both evenly. That was a mistake on my part. Anyway, I'll carry on and get these things cleaned up. Well, here you can see, this is the tool I'm making for the AGFA retaining ring. And you can see that fits that quite nicely. The outside diameter is good. It's not overly large. It's no bigger than the outside diameter of the flange. What I do need to do is mill away a section on the inside here and here so that it uh, will clear the lens on the inside. You can see those bits you can see there will need to be machined away. So that's the next task is just to mill out those two pieces to leave two short stubs at the end here to engage the tool. Well apart from the uh, apprentice mark here these have come out quite well. I reduced the outside diameter on this one to get it down below 27 millimeters and I just used the Dremel to do that. This one here I don't need to reduce at all. That's fine just as it is. So these two tools are good now. All they really require is a handle. And what am I going to do for a handle? Well I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with the previous examples which I showed you. I didn't show you how I made them. I will file out a square hole in the middle of those two tools to take a quarter inch drive from a quarter inch drive ratchet set and it's easily done with a hand file these are only mild steel it's only the work of five minutes so I'll do that this is what we've got to fit quarter inch square drive now I find that filing the holes out, you need a snug fit, that's what we're looking for. I don't particularly need that whole squared end to go right the way through that tool. I prefer it if it didn't. We just need good engagement all the way through that plate that we've just cut, really. Well, I've got this set up in the vise. I'm choosing a square file. Just doing a little bit at a time. And to keep it nice and square with the vise, I'll just use this little piece of uh, this parallel here on the top just to keep it square with the vise jaws so I can keep a good eye on what I'm doing. And every now and then I can take it out, check it against the tool. Now I can see that the length of it from here to here, that's fine. The other way is too narrow. So I've got to continue my filing, but we're on the right track. This parallel helps me keep that. Where was the vice? I need to bring that up. Otherwise I'll be filing my vice away.
And all I have to do is keep doing this a little bit at a time until such stage as the socket set driver fits nicely. As soon as that fits nicely the job is done. I'm sure this would be much quicker if I had access to a brooch but last time I looked brooches cost well over a hundred dollars and I don't have a press to use one anyway so a little bit of filing a little bit of checking to see where we are pretty close and uh, I'll bring you back when I'm closer still you can see that hole is not exactly square it'll get a bit prettier than that I don't need the corners to be sharp as you can see the hole is nice and square now and this tool fits in both directions quite well it's still snug I need to enlarge it slightly more so that this will go in easier I don't want to get it so easy that I can push it in easily with my fingers I want to have to drive this in with a hammer so there it is that's driven on with a hammer it's not going to fall off easily I'd have to knock it off with the hammer if I wanted to get it loose but there it is it's on the shaft now I would put this on a uh, this shaft's been mutilated to do other jobs but basically I'd put that on the screwdriver type shaft and that would work quite nicely so that's our tool for engaging the AGFA retaining ring here's our tool you can see how it would engage with the ring quite well and it comes up neat on the inside there at the threads now that that would probably work quite well at that point um, I may need to remove some tiny amount on the inside of those I'll find that out in practice and if I do it'll be a case of just pop this in the vise and just run the file across that surface to reduce it whatever fraction of a millimetre is going to be required but otherwise that tool should do quite nicely. I'm going to go inside, put that shutter back on the AGFA and make sure it works.